in this video, I'm going to show you how to purchase a theme from Theme Forest. First thing you want to do is go to Theme Forest. Before you come to Theme Forest, one of the things you want to make sure that you know is what the niche of the website is going to be. So hopefully you've already decided what your business is and what niche it is in. The reason why you want to make sure that you know that is because when you're in Theme Forest, what you want to do is search for a theme that's perfect for your business and niche. You will see a white search bar with a green search button. Click in the search bar and enter your niche. For this client, we're searching for a religious theme. So what I will do is type in religion. Go ahead and click on religion in WordPress or whatever your niche is. That will bring you to a page that will show you all of the themes that are in the niche that you selected. What you want to do is scroll through the themes and see if there's one that is appealing to you. In this case, I've already spoken with the client and we've gone through theme for us and selected her theme. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the theme that she has selected. And I'm going to show you what to look for when you're selecting your theme. So let's say you, like she, like the hallelujah theme. Go ahead and click on the hallelujah theme. And the first thing that I always do is I check out the ratings, the comments, and the date that this theme was updated. You want to make sure that the theme is not older than let's say six months. And the reason why is because WordPress is constantly updating. So you want to make sure that you're using an updated theme. I'm recording this in January 2022. So I see here that the last update for this particular theme was November 5th, 2021, which is within that six month time frame. So we're good to go. So things you want to look for are first and foremost, the item details. You've seen the theme, what it looks like, and it appeals to you. So you want to go ahead and click on the blue preview item button. As you can see, this brings you to the Hallelujah, beautiful WordPress theme for churches. Scroll down on the page. And in this situation, this theme has themes within themes. So what that means is it gives you options. So you liked or you thought you liked when you first looked at this, the theme with the man and the woman, but there are other options that you can go through. Make sure that you look at all the themes that are available with the theme that you selected. So there's a ministry and sermon theme, there's a religious community and preaching, there's a video background theme, and the one that selected this for is called Church and Religious Blog. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Church and Religious Blog. So again, I did this with the client. She knows exactly what she wants her website to look like, and she's already actually mapped out all the content that will go on the website. So we went through this theme and took a good look at it just to make sure that she can use she can enter her content in the places where we see the content that is on the theme. So you scroll through, you look at it. This is the blog section. There are certain sections that you can take out like this, for instance. So she's not a ministry per se. So she's not going to be taking um, offerings or donations. So we will remove this section. And then the subscribe our newsletter section. If you're not going to have a newsletter, you would remove that. There's a nice footer at the bottom of this theme. You see there's a copyright section, a place for your social media icons here. But scroll again back. Once you just I always do a quick run through just to see what it looks like. And then what I do with the client is I take her through and we figure out what it will look like once her content is in here. So her biggest concerns were that she didn't like all of the photos. But what I had to tell her is that remember the photos that you see will be replaced with her photos. The videos that you see here will re be replaced with her videos. And the in this blog section will have her blog content in it. So it will look like her very own website. Once she supplies me with the images that she wants, 
the next thing that you do is you go through and again remember how i said that this particular theme had themes within themes so you can go through and click on all the different themes that are available to see which one is best for you now this particular client she actually loved this one even after we went through the other themes so it's going to show you here different features that are included with the theme so you can click on any of these things so that you can see what comes with the theme um, but i always take i don't usually take the client through this because they're not really going to understand most of that except for maybe the privacy policy but i do take them through the pages that are on the theme so there's an about us page so it has a who we are section staff members testimonies give locations gallery and shop and just like i showed you on the home page of this theme if you don't want to use any of this stuff you can delete it. so we're going to be using the who we are page for her we'll use the testimonial pages because she's written a book um, the locations page we will not use so that will get deleted um, she doesn't have a shop so that will get deleted we may have a gallery for her she hasn't decided yet and of course the give page will go away as i mentioned before um, and the staff members page we're actually going to use for something else so let me just click on one of these pages so you can at least see what it looks like um, in comparison to the home page so the who we are page is actually we're going to make it into her about page so we'll have her mission uh, what she believes it'll have a, a word from her the author of the book and then the team section will come out because she does not have a team and the footer on your website should be consistent on each page so we'll leave that and then what, what we did was we just went through and looked through the ministries page, the sermons page, the events, etc. And we talked about what we will keep and what we won't keep. Now, the news page is actually the blog page. So and you can rename any of these pages on the navigation as you need to. Like this one will get turned into her blog. Now, with the blog, it will show you what all the posts like the entire blog page will look like so all posts is the actual blog post where it will list all of the blogs on the page it's going to show you what it looks it will look like once we fill it in with all of her blog content the blog page or the news page in this case has different styles so what you, what you want to do is go through each of these to check out the different styles. If you click on two columns, it will show you that her blog will show up in two columns. So that's what that will look like. And if you notice on the right hand side, the categories are there. Um, and in most themes, you can move the right side if you want to. It's up to you. It's called a sidebar widget. Now, if we can also look at the classic style of the blog in three columns. So let's see what that looks like. So you see, that looks pretty nice. We didn't look at this the other day. Um, but this is what the, the actual blog will look like in three columns. So the classic style will actually show you what the entire blog will look like in two columns or three columns. Once you're finished going through all of the pages and the navigation to decide whether you like this thing, let's say you didn't like the thing, just go back over to the home on this particular theme. Not all themes are going to be exactly the same, by the way. Some themes will only have one theme and that's it. You won't have these themes within themes. But let's say in, in this case, if you choose a theme that has themes within a theme, if, you, if you're not really fond of this one, just go ahead and click on the other themes that are available and see if there's one that you like better. If not, then you're just going to go back to WordPress and you'll just go back through the process of selecting a new theme as I showed you in the beginning. But let's say this was the theme that you're interested in. So we loved it. We loved the way it looked. There are a few things that you really need to check out on a theme. Don't just don't ever just go ahead and purchase the theme. Make sure that you go through these next steps that I'm going to show you. So we've checked out the item details. Now we're going to click on the reviews tab to see what people are saying about this theme.
So you see it has 15 five-star reviews. And when we go through the reviews, we see that everything was excellent. The customers like the theme. Make sure that you read these um, reviews in detail, by the way, because sometimes what these developers do is get other developers or their friends to come in and review the theme. And you kind of can tell when the, the reviews are not from real customers. The next thing you want to do after you've checked out the reviews and everything looks good, go ahead and click on the comments tab. And this is something you really want to pay attention to. So the comments tab is going to show you, is the theme developer nice to its customers? Are they helpful? Are they answering their questions? I've seen some theme developers that were not so nice to the people when they're asking the customers. They blame them for things that are happening with the theme. But in this case, what I did notice was um, this person named Christine was super nice to the people. So when they asked a question, where can I find the ability to add the date to the sermon archive? She comes back and she says, hello, thank you for contacting us. The sermons archives post already have the date and she explains it to them. Now, I've seen where some people, if somebody asks a, a basic question like that, they're not nice to them. And what they don't realize is that a lot of the people are just starting out. They're brand new, so they have basic questions. But in her case, she, she spoke to everyone in a way that was very kind and she made them feel like she's going to be there to help them if anything goes wrong with the theme and things things do go wrong with the theme which brings us to the next tab we're going to talk about is support so in this case you usually click on the support tab if you need support so this is um in this case they have popular questions for this item and then because we've purchased the support it shows us a go to item support button because I've already purchased this theme, I want to show you something that you, you won't see here because I've already purchased the license for this, but I'm going to take you to a theme that I have not purchased so you can see what this right column looks like and what you should be looking for. So this is a different theme, but you will see this no matter what theme you select. Over on the right column, you will see what type of licenses are available. So you see this thing when you click on the drop down arrow has a regular license for $29. You or one client can use this. This is a single regular license, but then they also in this case have an extended license for $2,500. So of course, in most instances, you're only going to be buying one theme, but you want to make sure that you look on this right column. It's going to give you the price. It's going to tell you all the features of this theme. Most of them will have free six month support, but you always want to make sure that you have that support. And my recommendation is that you always pay um, the 12 months extended support because after this six month support expires, it's going to go back up to the regular price. Now, this is really inexpensive. The thing that I just selected, the client paid $17 for the extended support, but over here on the regular price of the extended support, it was $41. So you always want to make sure you take advantage of that lower fee. Uh, before we go ahead and click add to cart, I just want to show you a few more things. Under the price, it's going to show you the name of the theme author or developer, and it will show you their portfolio. Always make sure that you click on view portfolio just to check out what their rating is with their other themes. So you see they have a whole list of other themes that they have developed. And out of 467 ratings, they have five stars and the sales that they have made are 18,052. So this is definitely, and I have used this theme author before, so their themes are good and their support is good. I'm going to hit the back arrow. So back on that right column. So you've looked at their portfolio, everything checked out. Again, you want to make sure that the last update of the theme has been within the last six months. 
Um, it will show you when the theme was published. It will show you whether it is Gutenberg optimized, and that's a whole nother subject that we're not going to get into right now. But this particular theme is not Gutenberg optimized, and that doesn't mean that you can't use it. A lot of people tell you to use Gutenberg optimized themes. It gives you the resolution. Is it widget ready? It tells you what browsers it's compatible with what page builders and stores that it's compatible with. It lets you know the WordPress version, which you should make sure that you're always keeping up with what the latest WordPress version is. And right now it's 5.8. It lets you know what theme forest files are included. It lets you know if it has documentation. Never ever buy a theme that does not have documentation. The documentation shows you how to use the theme so that you're not constantly coming back to support and you should always check the documentation before reaching out to support. It lets you know if the layout is responsive. Responsive meaning is it going to work on desktop and mobile and then it just shows the tags that they've used to get found in the search. So let's scroll back up and look down on the left under the actual theme. It's going to give you even more information. It talks about the uh, store. It talks about the page builder that it uses. In this case, this one uses Elementor. It lets you know it's compatible with MailChimp and WPML. It has Contact Form 7, Translate Press. It lets you know that you can change your colors and then it lists other theme features. So just make sure that you're always scrolling down here to see what all the features are of the theme. Just to make sure that it has everything that you need and your client wants. Once you've decided on a theme, go ahead and click on Add to Cart and you can go ahead and check out. In the next section, we will discuss how to download the theme and install it on your WordPress website.